2000 BC, ancient Babylonia. A merchant lends a farmer some grain, and a few months later, when the harvest time comes, the merchant is paid back in full from the proceeds. This evolved into the exchanging of goods and the storage of valuables all run out of the temples and palaces of great empires. And so banks were born. Well, nowadays, the banks themselves are the empires, touching every facet of our lives and every corner of the globe. But are they at the cutting edge of tech, too? Are they using their immense resources to push the boundaries of artificial intelligence? Before we find out, here's a few facts about finance, AI, and the relationship between the two. Banks really started utilizing AI in the 1980s to predict market trends and provide customized financial plans for their clients. At the same time, more than two-thirds of Fortune 1000 companies already had at least one AI project under development. By 1993, AI was being used to detect fraud, uncovering almost $1 billion worth of money laundering cases in two years. And as of 2020, 52% of financial service providers had implemented AI-based products and processes. Because it's a goldmine, it's estimated AI technologies could deliver an extra $1 trillion each year for the industry. Finance and AI, a match made in heaven. All those ones and zeros to go with all those dollars and cents. Or is banking, one of the most heavily regulated industries on earth, gonna make slower going with AI than first thought? We investigated how AI and finance continue to evolve together. Artificial intelligence is beginning to affect how we begin to solve business problems. It sees patterns in information that, that we just can't you know, imagine, but the computer is able to detect these kind of hidden patterns in the information that we can't see. What we're seeing is very, very specific, uh, scorable tasks uh, being uh, augmented often very effectively. Um, what we are not seeing is the removal of a person entirely from a fundamental decision loop. The banking industry has used models for a very long time and we're very aware of how to in some way manage it, not to say that, that there's no risk associated with them. As an industry, we are very prepared to use models. Bank has, has had a digital strategy to use you know, data, a new technology to help the banks manage its financial performance and make strategic decisions. So my job is to help the bank make that leap. At that scale, it's not just bringing together that, that information, but how do we start to really use the intelligence of the computer system itself. So the computers are able to do things that we would normally associate with human intelligence. There are certain areas in which AI still doesn't exist uh, in any applied or practical sense. In others, you could probably go back a decade or two for the very first vestiges of it being implemented. We've gone through a change over the last couple of years where we can harness big data. AI allows to make those series of logical deductions. It has enough understanding, if you trust it, of your financial behavior. It understands your financial position. Even today, we, we model our corporate planning process is part of that's modeled by the movements of interest rates and the movements of, of FX. But it will become more dynamic and it will change as AI becomes less of a modeling task but something that reflects the, the, basically the forward-looking financial view of the bank. The end result that I would imagine we'll see in the coming decades is just more and more augmentation. More and more we'll be seeing AI being used to assist human decision-making, um, but I very much would expect to see a lot of humans still in the loop. We have the advantage that financial services is no stranger to using analytics of any kind, statistics, um, clustering segmentation of clients in ways that have caused severe problems. That's not a new phenomenon. Um, it's one that's very well understood in principle, and it's something that people do look out for quite rightly. And there's a regulatory apparatus that's been built up over 100 years to corral that and to contain it. But finance is much more around products and countries, accounts and customers' behaviors. Certainly, some of the most valuable areas uh, in banking in terms of where optimization, efficiency, and so on could be uh, most, of, most uh, valuable to the actual bank's bottom line, or also the most heavily regulated parts, say, uh, 
uh, things that are controlling the actual issuance uh, and risks associated with credit, for example. That's the area that the bank could potentially make massive improvements in terms of their bottom line, but it's also the area that's most uh, under the scrutiny of the regulators. The areas that are least under the areas of regulatory scrutiny are things like customer interactions at the very uh, kind of basic level when you've already onboarded the client. It still can lead to bad decisions. It can still lead to excessive risk-taking. Um, AI will not stop those occurring. It makes it less subjective, as in it's the gut telling us to do it, but more driven by a sense of being able to master our past, to be able to better manage our future. By analyzing vast amounts of data in the blink of an eye, and with their ability to detect things like fraud and money laundering, could AI systems have predicted or even prevented the major banking crises of the recent past? Should AI move beyond chatbots and become a dispassionate regulator of our finances? I hosted a roundtable to discuss what could happen if we let AI run wild with our money. So I'm really interested. Do you think uh, today's AI technology could have predicted the financial crisis of 2007, 2008? Give me a, a one-word answer to begin with. How about you, Carl? Um, no. Bonnie? No. And Giuseppe, you're gonna... Yes. Okay. Tell us more about why. To do AI, you need the data and you need the models. And the truth is that we have both. The AI tools are fine, but I also think um, there were weaknesses that were apparent due to um, human behavior, institutional weaknesses, and policy weaknesses as well. People did predict that there was a crisis on the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, some people made a lot of money from it. Let's just say that we did have the tools in place to you know, predict that credit default swaps would cause the damage that they did, okay? We still needed to know to look for it. AI is great at learning from historical um, data um, what the next prediction could be, but if you have um, instances like have happened in recent time where you have major changes in how the world operates, say like COVID, mm. then that relationship changes and it's difficult for the model to understand how that relationship has changed and adjust its predictions accordingly. You can't just ask a model to completely change task and solve a different problem. I think that it's still a blunt tool. When capable investors or economists were able to predict some of those crises, it's because they had a, a complete world model in their mind. So what I expect we will work on more and more going forward is to give AI in one or two generations uh, a proper inferential power, which comes from having uh, an ability to understand uh, the environment and not just the data. Bonnie, do you see much um, appetite from regulators to adopt AI either as a means of greater oversight of, of banks or as a way to stop their own regulatory uh, blind spots? I think many regulators uh, around the world right now have been making great strides in that direction already. And if you actually look at financial crises throughout history, most of our regulation in place tends to be reactive rather than preventative. Bank of England in 1694 comes out of a financial crisis. I don't think we'll ever be able to prevent financial crises outright, but I think what we can hope to achieve is to at least minimize the economic and social damages. Given the data intensity of finance, many might have expected that uh, it would be further along adopting AI uh, at this point. We've talked a lot about how regulation might constrain their adoption, but what else might be holding things back beyond uh, regulation? There are thousands if not millions of use cases that um, AI could be applied to. The cutting edge of AI is being applied, but there are going to be instances where adoption is going to be slower. Until we're able to build up that trust in certain key areas, I think AI is going to struggle to be adopted to the full capabilities it can. You know, don't get me wrong, I do believe that artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, 
all has tremendous pro uh, promise for improving the credibility of regulation and policy evaluation. But the main challenge we face right now is that the rate of um, or the pace of change in artificial intelligence methodology, tools and techniques, that rate of growth is really outstripping the um, current legal and regulatory framework. Maybe things will change 20 years from now. But again, I think that's the other thing that's holding us back right now, the trust mm. in the algorithm. Think about today, think about 20 years time. You're in the FinTech space. What's the biggest financial decision that you would currently trust uh, an AI with today? Um, I think I'm on the early side, on the early adopter side. Mm. So I'm probably the person who today would feel more comfortable yielding investing decisions to, to the AI. It's not unfettered. It's not, it's not a blank check. But it's enough to begin on the road to automation. So are you optimistic about the future of AI and financial services? And how far off are you from handing over those life savings to a machine? Well, I'm very optimistic about the future of AI and financial services. And in fact, I already have given the machine authority of my invest, over my investments. I'm absolutely positive about the future of AI in financial services. And as long as the trust and explainability is there, Sean, I'm not far off in trusting my savings to AI. Yeah, I'm optimistic. I think there's so much data out there which is key to any um, development of AI solutions. It will take the banks um, a while to adjust to what AI can do. But I think as it becomes more robust, trust will improve. Um, and people will start to see it in all areas of banking. So banks, with quite literally all the money in the world, aren't quite the AI pioneers you might expect. Is it because they're already as optimized as they can be? Or maybe it's that our money is the one thing in life we're reluctant to hand over to machines. But how long will it last? Is it safe to assume that eventually our currencies and savings will be regulated and guarded entirely by AI systems? Until there's a dramatic change in the landscape, Personally, I wouldn't bank on it.